greetings to all of you uh, so uh, it, it is my pleasure uh, to be in this forum uh, to uh, with hasgeek uh, where we are working together to uh, bring uh, together a collection on of discussions on health data to begin with we thought we should have a session on what is health data the medical records the journey of digitization of records in the country and a brief about uh, what are the policies and the laws that govern the uh, administration of this data in the country uh, uh, which we thought would be a good beginner for uh, people in healthcare space uh, it space and industry who would wish to know how uh, the health data uh, related uh, product development and research is happening in the country uh, as as I, I i would like to put it we have reached an accelerated phase of digitization in health records in the country so it is very important we speak about this and to speak about myself uh, i am a radiation oncologist by profession and i have been in this specialty since 2004 at an institution called christian medical college velour uh, which is uh, india's uh, one of the largest uh, private healthcare providers uh, and uh, i'm also part of a team driving forward uh, health uh, research in health data and AI in the institution. I was instrumental in rolling out the telehealth services for the institution. Uh, I personally feel that I understand that data-driven research and AI will have a very large impact on healthcare uh, in the coming decade, and we have to place ourselves uh, to be ready for that. And um, uh, because of that, my current research also focuses on AI, uh, AI in cancer. I am part of a lab, uh, which is this, it's a small lab, which actually uh, develops and trains models uh, for predictive models for uh, 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 digital biomarker development, <laughs> electronic patient reported outcomes, as well as uh, 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 auto segmentation tools and all we are developing. So my AI journey and uh, my uh, journey through uh, uh, about uh, digitized health data has been through this experience. And I would like to share about what I have learned, and what I've read up uh, with you so that uh, 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 we can take this discussion forward in this space. So about CMC Velour, uh, it's an institution which was established in 1900. It's a uh, it's around 123 years old now. Uh, it is a not-for-profit institution and uh, as uh, uh, highest uh, one of the top research uh, centers in healthcare in the country. We also are a large educational institution which charges the least fees for medical education in the country. We are uh, we see around 10,000 patients. Uh, on a daily basis in our outpatient clinics, and we have around 3,000 inpatient bed strength. <laughs> we are the cutting edge of research in the country in healthcare for many decades now. We are pioneer in many of the uh, medical applications in the country, and we have multiple labs which act as standardization labs for many other labs in the country. We currently have an AI lab also. Uh, if you look at health data digitization in CMC, 1990 is when our lab data went electronic, much before the country started doing it. Uh, since the time I joined CMC in 2004, I've been viewing electronic uh, uh, medical images and not on films or papers. Our uh, electronic medical records, uh, I think our journey has started 10, uh, a decade back and it's it's been a continuous uh, development. Uh, now we are moving from outpatient records being digitized to uh, the last 3,000 uh, bed strength. So it's a large exercise of getting the inpatient records also into a digitized space. So from paper to uh, digitized space, it's a long journey which uh, we have undertaken and I would share uh, experience from that also. <laughs> So uh, this talk uh, is uh, uh, about fulfilling a, a gap in information or knowledge, uh, which was identified when there was a lot of dialogue regarding the recent AIMS uh, ransomware attack, which you may be aware of. Uh, it actually paralyzed the institution, uh, and I personally believe it has actually affected lives and may have even ended some of them. So uh, the the uh, impact of uh, disruption of digital health services is enormous and hence uh, we need to have a forum to initiate discussion of uh, uh, issues related to that. 
So to begin with, I would like to uh, introduce to you what qualifies as health data traditionally. Obviously, it has been uh, records of patients, any interaction of patient within a healthcare system, uh, when it documents becomes a data, and then when it sits on paper, it's a paper document which has been traditionally there. And when, when we put it on computers, it becomes electronic health data. So this can this can uh, uh, encompass everything related to their in interaction, including their personal information, height, weight, their habits, uh, their diet plans, uh, their issues, their old illnesses, uh, their blood reports, their uh, CT scans, <clears throat> any procedures they have had, their contact information, their family's illnesses, their children's uh, issues. All these get documented because uh, they are all uh, they have an interplay with the health individual's health. Also, the interaction or transactions that happen at the hospital, whether it be health related or billing, all those becomes part of the uh, electronic health record. So. Uh, electronic health record is created for each visit for an individual and for each individual within the system. So then uh, that brings us to understand the uh, what is the difference between an EMR and EHR. These are jargons that are used in this space. So uh, in the digital format, the, all the medical records that are kept for multiple patients within the four walls of an institution comes under the term electronic medical record. But when a, pers uh, when a person stores his own information, across several institutions or across several encounters or across several years of his life into one single document that is called an electronic health record. So uh, just to understand the difference in jargon when we use these uh, terms, there are standards uh, with which pertains to how an electronic medical records have to be kept. When it was in paper format also, we do have standards as to how documentation has to be done, which has been translated uh, into e EMR standards. India rolled out its first EMR standard in 2013, which was revised in 2016, but uh, the adoption has been uh, very poor. Uh, we would come to that. There has also been international uh, uh, EMR standards, uh, especially coding systems to code diseases and all, but uh, adoption in our country is very low. Uh, the adoption can only be driven forward if we have electronic uh, medical record. Uh, examples of these are ICD codes, SNOMED Central, uh, LOINC, LOINC uh, particularly refers to how uh, lab data gets uh, documented. So all these are available. <clears throat> when we speak of digitization in health, data, it does not pertain to uh, data that is collected within the four walls of the hospital. Digitization also brings in data from monitoring the patient from his life outside, his health outside the institution. It can be physical, mental, or any domain of life that can be monitored through wearables, through computers, through mobile phones, through telephone calls, through interactions that they make, through emails. All this can be added to the health data of a, a patient. Even their social media presence now can contribute to uh, uh, metrics in uh, health. So monitoring all this data uh, can actually positively uh, contribute to uh, various uh, domains in healthcare policy space. How to how to uh, probably probably uh, a social media uh, uh, health uh, status update can actually tell the government uh, whether a pandemic is breaking out or uh, or uh, is, there a, is there a cluster of illness or misery happening in one particular region. So all these. Uh, uh, show us that when, when health data is digitized, the scope of utility also increases. Uh, and digitization enables reuse. Uh, reuse is a very important term. Uh, why do we have to record data? Because we want to look at it and use it for a future purpose, uh, whether be it in paper or not. When it is in electronic format, your ability to retrieve and use it purposefully increases. That is, uh, when we speak of mineable data, the utility goes beyond uh, use by humans. You can actually enable computers to also use this and uh, derive uh, solutions much faster than what a human by mind can do. So uh, uh, reuse of health data is important to improve healthcare services through research and planning. And uh, uh, an individual's data has a real impact only if it is shared and compared with other individuals. And one man's data is probably useful for 10 other people uh, in future. So that's how healthcare works. So this also uh, is contradictory to a personal uh, conviction that my health data is my own privacy or uh, I own that data. So uh, sometimes the healthcare systems believe that whatever we collect within the four walls of the institution, I own the data. 
and I have to make it safe and secure. All these are true, but this also means that if we put these walls around us, the individuals or around the healthcare system, this reduces the reuse and the utility of the health data. So there should be a, a dialogue on policy of reuse of health data and uh, a safe, purposive and responsible reuse of health data is very important. And uh, citizens also should have the rights and the opportunities to uh, to be involved in decision making regarding this reuse of health data. All this for a positive outcome. <clears throat> so this uh, uh, brings us to uh, talk about what is happening in India in the digital healthcare space. So I spoke about the electronic healthcare standards, which came out in 2016, and this statement that that is highlight uh, in the 2016 document that the idea that any person in India can go to any healthcare service provider any diagnostic center, any pharmacy, and be able to access and have fully integrated and always available health record in an electronic format is not only empowering, but also the vision for the efficient 21st century healthcare delivery. I, I fully uh, agree to this statement if this is, uh, uh, this is uh, implemented uh, in a uh, rightful way. <clears throat> now, why? Because the vision of any individual visiting any healthcare delivery system and his uh, healthcare records, images, CT scans are available with permission at that point of care, improves access of care for our citizens and improves faster delivery of a care to, uh, uh, to people. So, uh, this is very important and uh, this i think the philosophy of india's digitization in healthcare uh, uh, runs around this particular statement though the uh, digitization concept i mean that was brought in in 2015 this was not pertaining to health space but 2015 is when we started the digital india journey uh, but when we look at it 2023 uh, i i personally feel less than 20% of health data in the country is digitized and reusable at this point <laughs> we will uh, go into why uh, we feel some of this is not happening. So uh, uh, well, the advantage of digitized medical health data, uh, 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 it actually uh, improves uh, better and evidence-based healthcare. That means uh, the, the standardization of delivery of care, standardization of decision-making, all this improves when we have digitized health records. Uh, the rollover time is improved. That is, a uh, patient comes in uh, and uh, to the point of delivery faster and patient leaves faster, which enables more patients to be taken care of. Repetitions are avoided. Errors are avoided. All these are advantages of di digitization. And when we have large amount of data, which can be mineable uh, and the computers can play a part in decision making, then we have predictive, analy predictive analytics, which actually support the doctors in decision making more accurate, uh, uh, more uh, the right choice of uh, care can be made to the right patient. <clears throat> And this also enables uh, the policy makers to make the right decision for the country in the health space. <clears throat> so what are the issues with the adoption of uh, EMR in India? As I said, less than 10% of the country is uh, digitized in the health space. It is driven forward mainly due to the ins insurance schemes because that, that, uh, enable, uh, that actually mandates people to share data electronically. So many of the new centers that come up are uh, in the electronic digital health EMR space and not in the paper space. But uh, <clears throat> there are issues with la adoption of EMR. One is uh, the lack of awareness or the benefits of EMR. This is this is universal across the medical uh, fraternity. Uh, the uh, generation has been generation of medical uh, staff has been very comfortable writing on paper, and uh, it is very difficult to uh, make them learn and unlearn to move to a digital space. And lack of compatible technology this is something which we see hospitals have been using computers, but uh, when we want to buy a new EMR system, they might have to move on from a Windows 97 format, change all the computers to a current Windows 11. So uh, a lot of investment has to go in. So the, the, the uh, uh, decision makers will think twice uh, before getting that. People are already comfortable using paper. So why, why should we invest so much? <clears throat> So many government hospitals does not have EMR. So uh, even if uh, uh, they have EMR, uh, it is uh, it, it has to be a universal EMR, which is common across platforms than uh, once one government, one hospital using one, a person trained in another center will take more time to adopt to a new EMR than 
uh, than a common one. So there are many issues with related to EMR adoption. <clears throat> Also, the barriers that we have uh, identified is that the an, an EMR system implementation is not a one switch change. Uh, it takes probably months and years. It, it does disrupt. It will slow down the workflow of the hospital when a hospital tries to move from paper to EMR. But uh, obviously, we are uh, talking about the smart brains in the country in the healthcare space. So their learning curve will be faster, but still, uh, we do expect uh, a disruption. Uh, <clears throat> and also what we have seen is the vendors actually bring EMR modules in phases. I mean, it's linked with uh, business, uh, new licenses. Uh, if you want this module, you add this. So it is not a one-step replacement for what is all available in paper to an EMR. Sometimes only one module is adopted or bought by a hospital. So it's a mixed bag. Uh, user friendliness is always questioned. Mm -hmm. Not all EMR are uh, the front front is uh, as user friendly, <clears throat> and uh, EMRs does not capture all the data that probably we want to put in. Uh, so and and it becomes cumbersome in that space. So if I have to document on paper as well as EMR, then that's duplication of work, and with time I would just stick to paper alone. So these have been some barriers to EMR. Uh, so. Uh, other issues that have been identified is that the vendors that we speak to when we want to adopt EMR, they may have less uh, idea about the workflow in a hospital. So, uh, and each of these hospitals workflow are individualized and uh, one EMR which works well in one hospital may not work in another hospital. So this leads to deployment of EMR with various gaps and that reduces its uh, utility. And uh, so, Basically, there has been a lot of problems in the EMR space, though we are moving forward with it. And if there is this gap, uh, which we now identify that, that exists between vendors, product developers, and healthcare professionals, which needs to be filled in uh, soon for the benefit of the country. <clears throat> what about the patient experience on uh, digitized health uh, data? Uh, obviously, this is not from India. This uh, this obviously is a patient feedback which has been collected in the West, where uh, all the documents are currently in the digitized uh, space, digital space. Uh, obviously, they the Western uh, population feel that it actually improves the communication between the uh, institution and the individual or the uh, customer. <clears throat> there is an easy maintenance of a personal health record. You quickly share the record on a digital format. Improves accessibility of the patient. Uh, obviously, it avoids repetition in tests, documentation, etc. Uh, so, uh, since I am in, I am using EMR uh, space, uh, EMR and electronic prescriptions. Uh, I know for sure that if I am actually prescribing a medicine which I prescribed three days back, the software would actually prompt me to tell me that this has been prescribed. So, a lot of errors can be avoided. <laughs> A reduction in uh, interview questions. So each time an encounter with a uh, doctor starts with uh, 15 minutes of interview about uh, the health history and also when you have an objective documentation of EMR, uh, sometimes these questions need not be asked. As one example is smoking history. If it's already documented by another doctor, we need not have to go into that and it's already available. Uh, the care becomes more responsive, more, more directed, uh, safer care. These are all patient perspective less prone to errors, yes, uh, with e-pharmacies, e-labs. E-labs means the, uh, the lab machines are directly uh, driving the uh, results in the electronic format into the EMR, and there is no uh, third-party intervention or a manual intervention into that. So <clears throat> there is less prone to error. Electronic imaging records, uh, most hospitals uh, which are coming up now or in the current era are in the digital space. We spend less and less on films and prints. Uh, uh, and once we are in electronic images, it can be easily shared across devices through, uh, through cloud spaces. So, and it's available everywhere. <clears throat> So these are all patient perspective of advantages of digitized health records, uh, which also brings us what are the uh, initiatives uh, that government has brought in to enable e electronic health records. If you look at the various programs that governments have rolled out uh, to bring in electronic uh, health data, this there has been multiple, but these has been uh, these have been in single uh, individual pockets. One example is the COVID uh, data. During the COVID rollout time, every uh, government wanted data from the hospitals. Every hospital was supposed to update that day, that day's uh, 
statistics and patient data, patient information to websites, or this happened in the digital space. So that actually fast tracked a digital digitization of healthcare, but this was not a direct uh, transfer from somebody's EMR to a uh, cloud space, but it was a, again a manual driven digitization and sharing of data which has happened. Uh, and uh, in this slide, what we show are various initiatives, but these are all not connected initiatives. So uh, if we look at the future of uh, digitization and policy in the country, uh, this is what the governance structure for, uh, if I look at who, who is in charge or responsible for electronic health record, obviously the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and various acts that have come under them, Information Technology Act, uh, and specifically the DPDP and the DISHA Act, which uh, directly uh, pertains to healthcare data. And there is also increasing talk about the National Health Authority, which is a uh, which is more in prominence now because of government's uh, government of India's vision of uh, uh, covering all citizens under a healthcare insurance through the Aishman Bharat Digital Mission Scheme. So uh, this is uh, overseen and uh, by the National Health Authority, which is the apex body for this flagship program. And under them comes the ABDM program. So uh, uh, under ABDM, uh, uh, it, is, it is like a contributory care where the center and the state shares the responsibility of health care of an individual, of, of a citizen. So subsidized care through uh, uh, insurance, driven by center and state. To deliver this, <clears throat> all the hospitals have to be partners for the ABDM mission. And to be partners, there should be sharing of healthcare data. And to share healthcare data, the easiest format is a digitized format. So this is actually driving the digitization of healthcare records in the country. And to enable this and to prevent duplication of identity, we need a unique patient number, which is common across multiple hospitals for that particular individuals. And that brings in something similar to Aadhaar called the Aishman Bharat Health Account. So this is the future where individuals get an ABHA number, which is a 14 digit number, which will be there for their entire life and which will be used for their healthcare records across all hospitals. So, so one common unifying point for electronic uh, health records across institutions, which will drive data portability between uh, in institution. One patient goes from one institution to another. <clears throat> so this is currently available and people can actually get their unique identification number uh, under the ABD. <clears throat> We also have to speak about uh, DISHA. DISHA is uh, Digital Information Security in Healthcare Act. Uh, this is only an uh, act which has come in. It has not become a law as far as I understand. This is similar to the HIPAA, HIPPA, which, uh, the, uh, which is a very strong healthcare privacy law that exists in the United States of America. DISHA is India's answer to HIPAA. Uh, but uh, understanding the cultures cultural differences and sensitivities of the population in the country, the laws are written slightly different. For example, uh, in the West, an individual is very protective of their privacy. Uh, in India, the uh, privacy kind of centers around the family. So we have actually, uh, under the Disha scheme, the, uh, uh, the family members who can share data have been listed, which is quite large, which I feel is understanding of the sensitivities of the uh, population of the country. <laughs> So uh, then DPDP, DP, uh, DP Digital Personal Data Protection Bill, uh, which is in limelight now because the government has asked all the stakes, stakeholders to write back to them after reading this bill before it is made into an act. And currently it is back with the purview of the government because they are now looking at the responses from the citizens. This is not specific to healthcare data. But uh, this can also, any kind of personal data, whatever is collected in the IT industry also comes under this bill. This bill specifies uh, what kind of data sharing can be done with what countries you can do, uh, what, what kind of research you can do on data. All these have been detailed in this bill. Uh, some of the dialogues that I've heard in the health space regarding this bill is that uh, though uh, what, what is more important for healthcare and EMR is data portability and interoperability, and the bill does not speak uh, about uh, those two aspects. So that is something uh, as a criticism that I've seen, I've heard from the healthcare uh, space. <clears throat> so when we put all this uh, uh, data in, of, of uh, patients and uh, hospitals in the uh, digital space, this also brings us 
uh, to be vulnerable for attacks or data breaches. Uh, and if you look at what has happened in the West, uh, most data breaches happened through the vendors, that is third party vendors who have supplied the EMR and all. So uh, it is very important that uh, we uh, speak with uh, importance, the safety and security of the data as much as we speak about its privacy. And this uh, can only come with a, 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 a knowledge, attitude and practice change among the users. That is mainly the healthcare space. And I, I would feel that that is totally lacking. Uh, uh, what is data safety and security? Uh, among the healthcare professionals, and which is another important gap that we identify in this space, which needs to be fulfilled as we drive forward the digitization in healthcare space. Uh, I was also asked, is there is there any body uh, which actually uh, uh, the hospitals have to report to if there is a data breach, like what happened in Ames? I could not find anything specific, though, though there are national accreditation hospital standards in the country, they also have not brought out any reporting guidelines. But uh, uh, this is something which exists, I think, uh, which is the computer emergency response team. This is not with respect to healthcare data, but any kind of cybersecurity incident should be reported to uh, this particular agency. That is uh, that is what I could gather as an information, but I'm not sure of what happened, what is specific to healthcare space. <clears throat> so to kind of summarize uh, digital health records in India, this has entered an accelerated phase and we are seeing this acceleration due to uh, a large number of healthcare insurers uh, coming in, large number of people adopting healthcare insurance, the Ayushman part of digital mission, all these are driving the uh, healthcare digitization in a faster rate in this country. But we should understand there are issues related to healthcare records and digitization happening in individual silos in specific hospitals which does not talk to each other. There is lack of interoperability and data portability. We do not understand data security and privacy. Uh, so there exists a gap in knowledge, which is large, which I have listed out in several domains within this. And uh, this is between healthcare providers, policymakers, research and industry. And uh, we feel that CMC, uh, having been in the digital health space for more than two decades, is uniquely placed to host a meeting uh, which brings together IT professionals, policy makers, students, clinicians, researchers, everyone on this topic. This would be held on March 17th and 18th, 2023 at CMC Valor in Tamil Nadu. And this is open for registration. And uh, I'm happy to say that Haskeek is our media partner in this. And uh, we would be looking forward to hosting this forum to discuss some of the topics that I have listed here. I just gave you a primer. This is a forum to actually discuss these issues in depth. And uh, we feel that when we have good, clean health data, that is when we can implement advanced research on AI, which will uh, finally uh, permeate into uh, patient care and deliver better life for our uh, citizens. So thank you. And uh, once again, all are welcome for this meeting. Thank you.